dreams in the desert. You know, my wife is a very sociable or socializing type person, which makes sense because of me being a loner. <laughs> it would only be natural of God for the opposite to be true of my spouse. And in the sense of the two becoming one, there would be a counterbalance that, you know, opposites often attract, but at the same time, God likes to meld sometimes things together that don't seem as though they go together, but together they become stronger. Well, I'm always amazed at her ability that people just walk up and talk to her. I mean, <laughs> it's a, she can be shopping and usually it's older people, but they'll walk up and they talk to her. And sometimes, you know, when she knows, when she doesn't know I'm watching, I see her talk to other people and it's cute. It's not the same person that I know or the same interaction that her and I have, but I enjoy watching that about her. But a lot of my life, and maybe yours, if you're someone like me, has been alone. You know, I have enjoyed, in some ways, being alone because it brought me to a better appreciation and a more intimate dealing with Jesus in a personal way than a lot of people that are very social. But at the same time, you know, you see those things if you're a loner, and you go, man, wouldn't it be nice, you know, to have like all of what they're doing, you know, be with the barbecues and the picnics and do all the other things. And maybe you're not a loner, and this may not make much sense to you, but there is a time and a place where you will find yourself all alone, where if you're a social person, that will be challenging for you. It will perhaps scare you. I know for my wife, as she has grown in her relationship with the Lord, that I have watched her develop from a fearful person into a more compassionate and understanding person, that she becomes more in love with Jesus and less fearful of the things that may have frightened her before. And my confidence is that when she finds herself alone, she knows who to turn to, and I'm not worried about her anymore, where before I would have been very concerned. And so, if you have been a social person and you find yourself alone, or you're a loner and you find yourself alone, recognize that God, too, was misunderstood all his life. That Jesus, when he came and was born, really couldn't share a lot of what he knew or what he was experiencing because, in fact, he had to focus in on his personal relationship with God. And that had to give him the satisfaction and the strength he needed to go forward in life until the day that he finally went to the cross and died as he was born to do, looked forward to doing, and accomplished even despising the shame to do for our sakes. So, if it so be that you find yourself alone in ministry sometimes, where you're compressed in from every side and you're driven to a place of just trusting the Lord with you know, what little you have or what much you have, Recognize that it's okay to be alone. It's not a sin. It's not a fearful thing. But it is a place where God will stand with you. And He will care for you. September... Yeah, September. <laughs> Thou remainest. Streams in the desert. There are always lone hearth fires, and so many of them. And those who sit beside them with the empty chair and cannot restrain the tears that will come. One sits alone so much. There is someone unseen just here within reach, but somehow we don't realize his presence. Realizing is blessed, but admittedly rare for many people. Part of why we do this devotional is to get you to recognize and realize that God is with you, he's in you, he's for you, he is accomplishing through you, to those around you, all that he wants to do and be and feel in and being alive as the living God to you. Because you are his creation, that you are unique in all of the universe because you have the living God inside you. It belongs to the mood and to feelings about realizing. It is dependent on weather conditions and bodily conditions, the rain, the heavy fog outside, the poor sleep, the twinging pain, these make one's mood 
so much, they seem to blur out the realizing of Jesus in you. But there is something a little higher up than realizing. It is yet more blessed. It is independent of these outer conditions. It is something that abides with you. It is this, recognizing that presence unseen, so wondrous and quieting, so soothing, calming, and warming, recognizing his presence, the master's own, without needing the feelings to accompany him. He is here close by. His presence is real. Recognizing will help realizing too, but it never depends on it. You just recognize he is here because he said so. I more immensely and more the truth is presence, not a thing, a fact, a statement. It is a fact that God is here, that God is in you, that God has promised and God has done, and you know it's true. It is a fact. Someone is present, a warm-hearted friend, an all-powerful Lord, the Almighty God. And this is the joyful truth for weeping hearts everywhere. Whatever be the hand that has drawn the tears, by whatever stream it be that your weeping willow is planted, know in the midst thereof that where you are, there God is. And God has not left you comfortless, but rather he has come to you and is with you to be both a comforter and a consoler and to cause you at some point in time to realize and to recognize that he is with you in you and will always be his presence all about you let's try and think of a word that isn't even in english what is the word who knows oneness but he will always his presence will always be there as a being that only god our father can be which is god almighty your god and my god Father.